What is compression? First, what is it? What we're typically talking about? When we use the term compression is dynamic range compression. This refers to the variance or difference between the loud parts and soft parts in a given sound. In a wave like a sound wave, it's the comparative change in amplitude over a given time. If you were looking at an audio waveform on your favorite recording software, or on an oscilloscope, the dynamic range would be the difference from where the waveform is small to where the waveform is big. That difference is the dynamic range. Compression simply means to make smaller, or to squeeze something so it fits in a smaller area. So if we put all that together, we can define dynamic range compression as a process to reduce the difference between the loud and soft sections of a sound. What does that mean for music and for the ears of our congregation? It means after compression, things will be a more even volume. Next, how does this process happen? Typically, it happens in one of two ways. The first is called downward compression, and it's what we usually think of when we talk about an audio compressor. Its function is to make louder sounds softer and leave soft sounds alone. The next, slightly less common way, is through upward compression, also called expansion. This has the function of taking sections of audio that are soft and making them louder, while leaving loud sections alone. In short, a compressor will either make loud sounds softer or soft sounds louder, but the end result is always that there is less difference between soft and loud parts of a sound. So, why? Why does this even matter? And how can it help us with our mixes? To even out the volume of a signal. This is great for something like a vocal that is very loud at some parts and very quiet at others. Compression will even out those differences. Envelope control. The envelope of a signal is just a fancy way of talking about the attack, sustain, and decay of an audio signal. Think about a drum hit. It has a huge burst of energy right at the beginning, that's the attack, then it rings out for just a moment, that's the sustain, and then the sound fades away, that's the release. We can use a compressor to change the sound of those three elements. To add more punch, or sustain to our drums. Threshold. Threshold of a compressor is the volume level that a signal must cross in order for the compressor to turn on. In other words, the threshold sets how loud a signal needs to be before the compressor kicks in and says, okay, I'm going to start turning this signal down. The threshold control is arguably the most important control on the compressor because it controls whether the compressor is actually doing anything or not. The amount of compression that's happening is displayed on a gain reduction meter which is measured in decibels. Every compressor will have one, so that you can see how much compression you're actually doing. So if you see your gain reduction meter reading minus four decibels, that just means that your compressor is acting on the signal and reducing the volume by four decibels. If your threshold is set too high, the compressor will never actually kick in and no gain reduction will happen. If your threshold is set too low, you'll be slamming your compressor resulting in a ton of gain reduction and getting unnatural pumping sounds and a signal that sounds squashed. Ratio once the signal crosses the threshold, the next function is for the compressor to actually react and turn down or compress the signal. But how does it know how much compress? That's where the ratio control comes in. The ratio tells the compressor how much to attenuate or turn down the signal once the threshold has been reached. Before the threshold, no gain reduction occurs. But once the threshold is crossed, the ratio tells the compressor how much reduction will take place. You'll see ratios listed as numbers like two to one, or 4 to 1, or 20 to 1 or something like that. What those numbers indicate, is the ratio of input to output. Let's start with the ratio of 1 to 1. That ratio means that no compression is happening. What you put in is what you get out. If you put 100 decibels of sound in, you'll get 100 decibels of sound out. No change at all. Now, let's go to 2 to 1. That means that for every 2 decibels you go over the threshold, you get only 1 decibel of actual volume increase. You see what happened there? 
We went two decibels over the threshold and we only got one decibel out because the compressor turned on and reduced the signal by the amount we specified. Two decibels in, one decibel out, two to one, got it? Let's say our threshold is 100 decibels, meaning the compressor will turn on and affect any signal over 100 decibels. And we put a sound through the compressor set on two to one. That's at 104 decibels. What will come out? The answer is 102 decibels because we went four decibels over our 100 decibels threshold. And that extra four decibels change will be compressed to only a two decibels change because of our two to one ratio. Let's change up our ratio just a little bit by going to four to one. Now, we've still got our 100 decibel threshold and we're still introducing a 104 decibel signal. Now what comes out? It's 101 decibels. This is because our ratio being 4 to 1 says that 4 decibels must be introduced above the threshold to get 1 dB of actual volume increase after compression. Attack. Attack is the length of time. It takes a compressor to apply roughly two thirds of the targeted amount of gain reduction. First, we need to realize that attack time is really more like attack rate. Increasing the attack time doesn't slow down how long it takes for the compressor to respond. It actually slows down the rate at which the compressor applies gain reduction. It always responds instantly, but it moves slower. Attack time is not a delay before when the compressor starts. Attack time is how long it takes the compressor to fully apply the gain reduction. Once the signal crosses the threshold, it always starts applying gain reduction instantly, no matter how long or short the attack time is. Release. Release is the time. It takes a compressor to restore roughly two thirds of the reduced gain to the compressed signal. When a compressor attacks, it is applying gain reduction. It is lowering the signal level, but gain reduction is only half the picture because for every decibel of gain a compressor takes away, at some point it has to put it back. And that process, let's call it gain restoration, is the business of release. The faster your release, the faster the compressor restores the gain it took away when attacking. Attack is the length of time. It takes a compressor to apply roughly two thirds of the targeted gain reduction. Release is the length of time. It takes a compressor to restore roughly two thirds of that reduced gain. How to set your compressor. Attack. Fast attack, beginnings of drum hits are squashed down. Not as much impact, but good for things that you want to stay a very consistent level, like a bass or maybe a vocal. That has a tendency to suddenly get loud. Medium attack, great for controlling lots of signals. Many compressors have fixed attack times that are what would be considered medium. Good starting point. Slow attack, great for things where the attack of the instrument is important. You want to hear that initial punch of the drum hit before the compressor fully kicks in. A slow attack time allows this to happen.
How to set your compressor. Release. Fast release, this is good for when you want the compression to be fairly transparent. In other words, you want it to get in, do its job, and get out. On drums a fast release is often used for this reason. Medium release, this is good for sources that are very even in their volume. Guitars, basses, and keys are prime examples of good candidates for a medium release, because their volumes typically don't change quickly. Slow release, once again this is for sounds that are very even. Most things don't use a slow release. 